movements in making transformation possible and in, uh, on the one hand, in creating pressure uh, uh, for change, uh, but also um, in providing the sort of uh, sustained vision and to some degree some of the ideas that would carry social, transfer, uh, social policy transformation uh, out. So here, FDR, we can see FDR relying both on labor uh, on the one hand and also um, on his relationship with things like the, uh, the Townsend movement um, uh, in order to push a more radical reform agenda uh, in, in the mid-1930s. Um, uh, Reagan um, uh, tapped into the wellsprings of, uh, of tax revolt uh, fervor, certainly. He tapped into the wellsprings of religious right, but he also tapped into the wellsprings of the neoconservative uh, intelligentsia, if you will, mobilization, uh, in order to, uh, to, to generate and push forward a whole set of uh, transformational ideas in social policy and to help to sustain those ideas throughout um, the, the, the sort of uh, political policy, uh, public policy infrastructure as well. Um, okay, so the role of social movements in transformational moments is, a, is another lesson that Obama might learn uh, from history. Um, uh, uh, I'm gonna, since I'm running out of time, I'm gonna skip ahead. Um, and, and make up, um, make one, um, a couple of uh, closing points about what Obama might learn uh, from history. Um, one is that for all their uh, success in bringing about big changes in social policy, um, these two moments that I've uh, referred to, the New Deal and the Reagan Revolution, uh, involve fateful, if not fatal, compromises that had a lasting effect. Um, most prominent uh, in the New Deal was its fateful exclusions of African Americans uh, and large categories of women from access to full social and economic citizenship. Again, this was a, a fateful in that um, these exclusions uh, in turn exacerbated and then made themselves became the basis of deep-seated and reverberating structural inequalities that are not easily undone. Um, from uh, the standpoint of the Reagan Revolution, uh, one might point to uh, its inability, but also its really unwillingness to take on the so-called third rail of middle class entitlements. Um, one could argue, had it been willing to do that, it would have been willing. To, it would have been able to do much more in carrying out the, rebel, the full transformation that it uh, uh, envisioned. Okay, but so let me very quickly, since I only, I only have a couple of minutes, um, let me look now quickly at what Obama's actually has learned from history, as opposed to what he could learn from history. Because in light of Obama's announced ambitions uh, for transformation in social policy, perhaps the most striking thing um, about the record so far, anyway, is the contrast between his sense of the problems, the moments, the opportunity, and the need for transformation alongside um, uh, uh, and the actual approach um, that the administration has taken in sharp contrast to these earlier moments that he might learn from of social policy transformation. Um, the administration's approach has been deliberately cautious, purposely non-ideological, purposely non-confrontational, not particularly grounded in new or even in old principles of, say, collectivism, of, say, social insurance, of, say, shared risk and shared uh, need. I'm talking in particular of the case of uh, health insurance re reform here, and um, strikingly deferential um, to uh, the status quo and frankly to the, the very entrenched interests it is supposedly trying to reform. Um, nor has it been accompanied by an effort to flesh out either a new or revived sense of the meaning of social citizenship or, or what a reformed political economy uh, should look like and aspire to. And it's been tentative at best in its willingness either to mobilize, to seek out, or to seek out grassroots and movement support, or even to exercise the political power that that kind of mobilization um, would bring. 
So on the one hand, we can say, look, it's admittedly early, and, and um, we shouldn't underestimate the, the tremendous amount of opposition and the huge barriers that the uh, administration faces. But I want to suggest that the disconnect we're seeing between the promise and expectation of transformation and the reality of, of how they've gone about their social policy agenda can be explained by something else. And that actually by what Obama has in fact learned from history, and in fact has a hyper awareness of. Not so much of those moments of, of transformation, but of policy failure and the fear of policy failure that, uh, that, that, that goes along with that, the need to avoid it. You can see that uh, in three major ways. Let me really quickly. One uh, is in the administration's fiscalization of social policy. Here, picking up on a trend we've seen since the late 60s, but especially since the 1980s, which is to say burying policy priorities in budget commitments, which we can see both in the actual budget and the stimulus package, without being explicit about the values and change commitments that they represent, but also without challenging the underlying fiscal lo logic that has actually stymied support for the very kinds of long-term commitments and uh, infrastructure development kinds of investments that uh, Jason was talking about. Second and related, what it, uh, I think is what's, uh, what some have referred to as the stealth agenda uh, on, on particular hot-button issues, issues of race, labor, urban policy, and poverty, all of which um, invoke fears of backlash. Here again, Obama has learned a, a lesson of, uh, a, a, a misplaced lesson of policy failure all too well, that being too explicit on these issues is going immediately to spark uh, backlash, and therefore they need to be done beneath uh, beneath the radar screen. And then the last thing I would point to uh, is, of course, the health care debate. There, the most uh, striking thing, that, as I referred to before, was the immediate withdrawal from any idea of making this a social insurance uh, pro uh, program, or even a kind of a, a collective, uh, a collective uh, action, and instead focusing, most of all, on the, the politics of deference you know, to the industry you're trying to uh, reform, um, but most of all, an obsession with uh, that what we need is narrow victory at all costs. So I'm going to leave it there, and I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about that.